Hello Internet, in this video we are going to be taking a quick look at a feature in C Sharp called Generic Aliases. This allows you to effectively create a reference for a generic type that already has the types defined. Um, so if you're talking about lists or, or some other generic structure and you want and you're typically using it in some way like a list of strings, you can give a list of strings a specific name, maybe even just strings and then use that in your code instead of constantly saying list of strings uh, in, in your code. And this, the way this works is relatively uh, understandable. Um, the way this works is in the using statements, which is interesting, but, but it, it does kind of make a little bit of sense. Uh, and there's a lot of fun things you can do with this. So we're going to take a quick look and I will show you what you can do. Um, so the way this is defined is you do using and then the name that we want to call the thing. So let's just, work with strings. So we're just going to call this strings. So what we're doing is we are defining this new alias for a type of strings. And so if we use strings in our, in our code later, it is going to refer to whatever we put after this equals sign. And that's in this case, we're going to use system, uh, dot collections, dot generic, dot list. And we just need to give it the generic type. So that's just string and then put a semicolon. And that is our alias defined. What this means in our code is that now instead of typing list of this and importing our generic thing, uh, we can actually just use var uh, strings equals new strings. And we're just going to use the, the alias we, we defined. Um, if I delete this, this doesn't work um, because it's not defined anywhere. Um, but by doing this, we can actually kind of create more useful names than the generic types might imply otherwise. Uh, and so we can do any normal thing you would normally do with uh, a list here. So we're just going to add two elements to it. So we'll say uh, world of zero and like, comment and subscribe <laughs> because why not? It's it's a YouTube channel. So we're going to we're going to do that. Uh, and so close our close our list off. And that is our list. There's now two values in our list. And what we want to do is just print them out. So let's just for each over them for each. Uh, in our strings and we'll just console dot right line of that string. And so if we run this, what we should see is two lines that have our strings in them. Well, I don't know why it's taking so long, but there we go. Um, and this is, this sort of gives you a, a nice way to kind of more easily reference those things. Another useful thing is you do not have to import a full type. Um, in this case, we are defining a list and giving it some generic arguments. Um, you cannot define like parts of the gener generic. So if there's a dictionary and you want it to always be keyed off of strings, but have a, uh, a random value that you will define later. Um, I'm not aware of a way to do that. I don't think it's possible. Um, that might be a application for implementing your own type. This is not creating a new class. What we are doing is aliasing this. Um, so behind the scenes, if we look at what this is, it's just a class of this list. It is not strings. It doesn't point to that anywhere. Um, it's just at the top of our file. We're saying this is actually this. Um, but you can also say you have two types that have the same name. If you're doing this normally, what, what that would normally require is you would need to fully type the, the, the thing. So in this case, we did system collections, generic dot list. That can be a lot to type. So let's just cut all of that out and define something like um, gen generic. And we'll just say this is now our definition for generic things. And so if we want to use a linked list, for example, we could do var um, linked list <laughs> equals a new generic dot linked list. And now we're referencing inside of that uh, namespace and we're finding types in there without having to type the full namespace. This can be helpful if you have a really long namespace or it's just really annoying to type it all the time. Um, you can alias this down to as, as little or as much as you want. Um, typically, make, make it readable and it's, it's an improvement. Um, but there, there we go. Um, this is useful sometimes. Sometimes it's not useful. Sometimes it's confusing. Um, but I thought it was kind of cool to cover and it's kind of something that you don't always see. Um, it's really... People that know about this will use it sometimes and people who don't know about it will get confused. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, if you, if you start using this and you find find it useful, let me know in the comments what, what you're using it for. I'd love to hear that. 
Um, other than that, I will see you in the next video. So until then, see internet.